Welcome back to Erif. There's your test center. We had a look at that in the first video. If you haven't seen that, go check that one out. Now, normally you'll go behind me, which is where we went on the first video. Please leave a like on the video. Or don't. I've really gone past the point of caring anymore. Right, so now we're going to follow this learner. Because we all know how I like to stalk learners. Oi, you! <laughs> Feel free to just skip past me. I don't know why I'm in your algorithm. Just ignore me, I'm crazy. Okay, we're gonna go past this uh, car because it's got a left signal on. So I'm just gonna check my right mirrors, make sure it's safe and go around. So like I said, on the last video, we went the other way towards the horse roundabout where I did my terrible impression of a horse. This time you're gonna get my fish impression because what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to Erif. I know we're at Erif Test Center, but we're heading over towards Erif Train Station. And that's where the fish roundabout is by Erif Driving Test. Erif Test, Erif Train Station. Turning right, see that center line? No, <laughs> there's no one there. See the crease? Yes, keep to the crease, don't go over the crease. Reach the center of the new road, then turn. You'll be surprised how many people turn too early and they go over here into the oncoming traffic. We can't see if there's any vehicles coming around this bend. You must keep that robot position, okay? It's so important for right turns robot position make sure you keep the center of the road that you're on do not exceed it don't go into the oncoming traffic and only turn when you're in line with the center of the road that you're turning into that way you'll never go into oncoming traffic and you'll always stay safe and the safety is what the examiners are looking for so what that means is if you go a different way so say they tell you to go right on the roundabout and you go left on the roundabout as long as you've gone left safely, you'll still pass your driving test. I hope that will help you to just remain a little bit more calm if that situation comes up on your driving test. Because a lot of people think, ah, oh, I've instantly failed, I went the wrong way. No, that is incorrect. Stay safe, drive safe, you will pass your driving test. Following the road. Now these markings are a bit faint on the left there, but those markings are telling us that that's a separate side road. So we're following the road, that means we're following the road markings staying inside the white lines very difficult to see now if it was raining these lines they're so faint that they can be covered by the water and impossible to see so if you are practicing your driving test routes good job because they're extremely helpful we're turning left here remember we talked about these road markings being extremely faint have a look here these side road road markings just imagine they were covered with water it can be a little bit tricky now I'm being stalked. Okay, so this is here of industrial estate. Sometimes a bit stinky through here. I don't know what it is, but there's some kind of peanut factory over there. Yes, I have one right here. It's bulky, but I can see your carry on. Okay, back to driving. What's the speed limit? See if you're paying attention. No, you don't know? <laughs> what? I thought you were learning to drive before you were looking for... No, I never used to look for the signs personally. That was my biggest weakness, speeds. I did not know. Okay, how can I help you with this? Fury test tells us if there's no signs, no speed signs, and regular signposts, or lampposts, I should say, streetlights, that's a 30 mile an hour road so that's the conditions we're in at the moment no speed signs regular street lighting 30 miles there's a sticky peanuts again definitely gotta be peanuts some kind of nut oil if you've been doing your practice around there you'll know exactly what it smells like because it's like that all the time here yeah. uh talking about big factories and stuff like that next to like your next door neighbor to the test center, ear of test center, is Amazon. Now, if you've got a driving test booked around Black Friday, probably been canceled again, be careful. What I really must stress the most is make sure you get to your test center half an hour before, at least half an hour before. Don't park your car in the car park half an hour before, but get there so early on a black, just, it's mm, chaos. Now, if you're not booking your test at that crazy part of the year for that company, then you'll be okay. But do look out in any industrial park 
for lorries. Remember, on the last video when I came back and parked lorry in an oncoming traffic, could be another lorry, there's no room. So just always look for those places to pull over and stop. Now we're gonna turn right here because it's a bit more tricky. I'm gonna join a dual carriageway here. You could go through the lower road where it's boring like what we've just done. So I've took the second exit turning right. Look at this, speed change, 30 road. Now we're coming on to a 50. Is there enough room for me to join safely? There's not a long slip road here, so I'm gonna come in slowly. I'm gonna use my right mirror. It's very safe, I'm using both mirrors I'm signaling. And I'm really gonna give it some beans now. 30, 40. 50, there we go. So we really want to get up to speed. The fish roundabout. Here's the next roundabout. And we'll be turning right again. This time, the third exit. So I'm showing you all the most difficult test routes, the most difficult junctions on these videos. Just giving you what you need and not wasting your time. I've had too many instructors waste my time. That's why I get annoyed with a lot of instructors. Anyways, <clears throat> fish roundabout, turning right, mirror, mirror, signal, slowing down on the approach. Remember, that's the number one top of the list for roundabouts. The number one thing to practice slow, running speed, jogging speed, walking speed. We're going to stop. Is the car coming? Look at the wheels. No, it's not. So I can go. Signal turned off. Exit one. That's a no entry, exit two, coming for three, mirror, mirror left, signal left, spiral out over here, directly to my exit. Do not stay on the inside of the roundabout, spiral out to the left hand side of the roundabout. Make sure you do that at exit two if you're taking exit three. This next roundabout will throw people off and too many people fail here, turning right. Look at the road markings here. They're so faint, but that arrow is for people going up there. I can't go there, but the car behind me is. Now I can go in here. So make sure you don't turn too early like all the other cars, which will mislead us and make us fail our driving test. And then move over to that right lane at the right time, the correct time. Mirror, mirror, signal early so the car behind that's not doing it correctly knows our intentions. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move across into that right lane if it's safe, keeping the right signal on all of our observations and making sure we can proceed at the roundabout. Speed is now 30 miles an hour. And I'm doing 29. Now recently I had a student doing 25 on a road like this. The examiner failed them. Examiner said they really want to be doing about 28. So I'm doing 27 now. Let's get one more. Come on, Scott. One, there you go. 20, all right, 29 now. 28, there we go. Next roundabout, look for the road markings. Can you see them? I can. Right lane, straight, that's where we're going. No directions are given at the roundabout or any junction on your driving test. Continue to follow the road ahead. Some examiners use the slogan, nothing said, follow the road ahead. Red traffic light, wait here sign. Most important point about temporary traffic light, this big red sign. Make sure you see it and stop where it says wait here. Do not exceed the sign. Exceeding the sign will be a serious driving test. Fault and you will be crying at the end of your test. And if your driving instructor doesn't have any Kleenex, use your shirt. I don't care. <laughs> I'm too hot. I'm too hot. I've got a really cold drink down there. And because all of you people online are traumatizing my brain with all your stereotypes and stigmatisms and labels, I can't drink it. You know what I'm talking about, but I can't do it anymore because that's wrong but if i talk about it it's like oh, it's just gone to that next level now isn't it so so i'm working progress it's the adhd oh for anyone that does have adhd actually um pretty much i'm your driving instructor i just like to make things as simple as possible and with adhd we like to overthink and complicate things and our minds always running at 100 miles an hour 
just like me talking now, okay? Caffeine so hair cell soothing for hair. Okay, I digress. If you have ADHD, <laughs> give me a call. Um, I'm doing uh, usually good deals, okay? So we have to do an assessment, assess your driving, see where you're at, see if you're really struggling. The more someone struggles, the more I'd like to help. So, you know, without saying too much, give me a call, message me. Best thing to do is get me on WhatsApp, to be fair, okay? Most of the other stuff I, I'm not in control of, really, and I won't see it. I won't see it. So if you can WhatsApp me, that would be great. Okay, so here we're coming up to Upper Belvedere. So what we're going to do now is going to go up to Belvedere Test Centre, which is pretty much straight ahead. And then just before it, there's a roundabout. Okay, remember we're doing a lot of right turns. So we're gonna do a right turn when we get there. Now that's gonna take us onto this horrendous road. It's a mountain road, very steep. I wouldn't recommend doing manual at Area 4 Belvedere unless you've got impeccable clutch control. And I mean impeccable. I've had guys driving 20, 30 years stalling at roundabouts around here in third gear. Now forgetting to go back to first gear and then stalling again on the roundabout. That was fish roundabout coming back to the test centre. So, impeccable. Okay. Oh, is it safe? No, it's not safe, so don't let the bus out. I checked my mirror behind, the vehicle was there, but it was right there, wasn't it? Right behind me. So if I had stopped, I would have stopped that vehicle. That is a serious driver fault, okay? Unless it's safe, and it wasn't. That is another thing that used to really jar me. When it's safe, what do you mean? When it's safe, what does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> Turning right, third exit. So that's what the examiners say, by the way. And you'll hear me say it a lot because, you know, my job is to try and recreate this mock test or this real driving test as much as I can. Get you guys ready for the real deal, yeah? Put that stress level up to 11. Then when you go to do your driving test, you'll be like, ah, oh, this is easy. That Scott guy talks too much. He's way too stressed. It's intense. <laughs> Oh, I'm sweating over here for you guys. Don't forget to leave a like. Or don't. I really don't care anymore. <laughs> uh, but the algorithm cares. That's what cares. That's more important to me. So don't listen to me, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, now, this road, the horrendous road, we're on it. Let's see what it's called to give you guys a little heads up. Uh, pick. Pickery, pick, pick. I'm gonna spell it. P I C A R D Y. Picardy, Picardy Road, Picardy Road. Picardy Road, Picardy Road. Now, the thing is, this bit's not too bad. The bit at the top, it gets a little bit narrow, but here you can see it's wide. Now, it's gonna get narrow again, just down here. See the, the, the yellow and ah! That's what I was gonna say because the buses come up here. I swear there used to be double decker buses as well. So it's not just these little hopper buses, it's the big monsters as well. See how I was predicting it? I knew that this was gonna get narrow even before I could see. So if you can't see, assume the worst case scenario coming up around the corner. Be at a speed that is called an appropriate speed, by the way, if you see that on your test sheet. Be at a speed that you'll be able to react. So look at this, I'm at right, maybe a jogging speed. Could I react? Yes, I could. There, I've got to react. That's safe. If there was someone behind me, they're not jamming on the brake. There's no emergency stop. So we're doing a nice, gentle brake. Keep it nice and smooth for the examiners. You see me check my right mirror there as I moved out because you can quite easily get a motorbike just going, you know what, I'm not waiting and just zooming past. Less space, less speed, rule number one of driving. Now I have to go because I'm here now, but when I made the decision to go, there was no one coming. So make sure that when you make the decision to go, it's safe, safe to do so. And then if you're out now, you're in the junction, you're in that, that narrow part, keep going. Okay, at the end of the road, turning right. Now, this is really, really important. Keep the right side, the center of the road, if you're turning right. Make sure you see if there's traffic coming from the other side and the zebra crossing with the pedestrians on it there as well. So, although I'm just turning right, I've got to worry about the pedestrian crossing and I've got to worry about the side roads on the opposite side of the road that are also coming here. 
with me, like the pedestrian, all as I'm turning right. Roundabout, take the first exit, turning left. Remember Eerith from Belvedere, number one and number two most hardest driving test centers in the UK? It's safe, no one's there. And just calling back to earlier, you know, approach the roundabout, any junction, but mostly roundabouts, as people stress on roundabouts, at a sensible speed, an appropriate speed, which is what the examiners would call it. So whether that's a running, jogging, or walking speed, whatever you feel is the appropriate speed that you'll be able to make your decision safely, do that speed. Okay, I'm just linking to running, jogging, and walking because we don't need to mention numbers. Most people can just sense that speed, so that's really helpful. Now, a lot of people will feel that this is a 40. This is not a 40. Regular street lighting, no signs. And people go down here at 40 miles an hour on the driving test, coming back towards the horse roundabout. We're back to the driving test center now. Now, if they don't speed on this road and fail for that, they'll fail for using the incorrect lane at this roundabout to go straight ahead, second exit. Now, if you look at the left lane, it's got a left only arrow in it. Normally, we would use the left lane to go straight, but because the left lane is left only, we must use the center lane to go straight. Look for the center lane, position early. Stay in the center lane. Don't go in this lane or this lane. Stay in that center lane. Where's the center lane, Scott? There's no road markings. Don't complain to me, write to your local MP. Okay, center lane, left lane goes left, right lane's on the right, center lane's here, in the middle. Signal here, as you approach the first exit. To show everyone, we're gonna take the second exit, and here we are, back to the test center. These are little samples of what a test room is, but also what the examiner's gonna ask you to do in a test. And I do wanna make it clear, there's a few things we haven't done pulling over and stopping on the left three times, and the manoeuvre, okay? So those will definitely be part of your real driving test, but we're focusing on the test routes. We've done two for Erif now. We're back to the test centre. We're gonna have a short, well, I'm gonna have a short break. I'm drinking my cancelled coffee. If you don't want to cancel me, I'll see you on the Belvedere test routes. Until then, guys. Woo!